Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. About a month ago I decided to buy this Husky workbench because I really needed a dedicated assembly table. And what's nice about this workbench is the casters which make it portable. However, my favorite feature is the ability to raise or lower the height to the table. This especially comes in handy if I want to use this as an outfeed table for my table saw or lowering it to a comfortable level to sand and assemble my projects. This workbench is made of steel construction and has a solid wood top. This line of Husky workbenches are two feet deep but come in a range of table widths, 46, 52, 62, and 72 inches wide. And the height adjustability goes from a low of 29 inches all the way to a whopping 42 inches high. It's very sturdy, but what I don't like about this workbench is the wasted space underneath the top. In today's video, we're gonna go from this to this. My goal is to use these drawers for better organizing my small hand tools, sandpaper, and other items I have laying out that I use for my assembly needs. Before we get started, I want to let you know that this build was inspired by a fellow YouTuber, Johnny at Johnny Builds. He did a similar project to this one, so if you want to check out his video, click up here. I also want to be clear that this is not a sponsored video. I paid for this workbench with my own money, and I'm not affiliated with Husky or Home Depot in any way. Quick channel update. As of today, we're at 486 subscribers. I'm extremely grateful for all the support. I want to make a big push to 1,000 subscribers, and I need your help to get there. So stick around to the end, as I have an announcement to make regarding a giveaway to get this channel to meet its goal. Now let's get started. East Wing Woodworking. First off, I need to take some basic measurements before we can lay down the foundation of this cabinet. Oh, and before I forget, this Husky workbench is the 62 inch version. Right here, I'm marking out where I'm gonna cut out the notch so this piece could fit around the frame. Now you also need to cut an identical notch on the other end as well. By the way, throughout this video, I'm gonna be using a variety of different tools. So if you have any interest in purchasing any of these items, I'll have affiliate links listed in the description below. To secure the base to the frame, I'm using one and a half inch construction grade screws. The next step is to cut the side panels of the cabinet and the internal dividers that separate and support the drawers. I decided to use pocket holes as a method of joinery for this project. Now, as I've mentioned before, I'm not that big of a fan of pocket holes, but this method is quick, easy, and provides a lot of strength. Right here was my first mistake. I forgot to add these pocket holes to the top, so luckily I had this little portable pocket hole jig and this solved the problem. Here, I'm cutting out all of the pieces that are gonna make up the drawers. I'm gonna make a total of eight. Now this project is made entirely out of three quarter inch plywood and it took me about a sheet and a half to complete. As you can see here, I'm not doing anything fancy to assemble these drawers, just butt joints with glue and 18 gauge brad nails.
When assembling cabinets, here's a neat little trick that will help you determine exactly where to put your cabinet dividers. Place both drawer slides side by side here and include the folded instructions that came with the drawer slides. Now this will add an additional 16th of an inch wiggle room. Place the drawers right against them. Now you have an exact location to place your drawer divider. In addition, the drawer will act as a support when you drill in your pocket screws. The other added benefit is it helps keep the divider square. Here is another trick when assembling cabinets that contain drawers. When you determine where you want the drawer slides, starting from the top, use a piece of plywood as a support to hold the drawer slide in place while you attach it to the cabinet. Using the same piece for the other side will make sure your left and right drawer slides line up correctly. Next, all you need to do is cut the support down to accommodate the lower drawer slides. I had these two scrap pieces of quarter inch polycarbonate laying around and they worked perfect as a divider to properly separate each drawer. Here, I'm taking the measurements to determine the width of the drawer faces. I decided not to use drawer pulls. Instead, I'm going to notch out the top of each drawer face. Here I'm measuring up where I want the notch and drawing it up so I can cut it out with my bandsaw.
at the oscillating sander to shape it and clean it up. I'll use this as a template for all the other drawer faces. Again, I decided to keep things simple and just use glue and brad nails to secure the drawer faces. It doesn't have to be fancy, it's shop furniture. <clears throat> I was lucky enough to have a scrap piece of poplar laying around, so I decided to use it, as this stuff makes for a good face frame. You'll have to excuse me. I'm not sure how that happened, but I sounded a lot like an 11 year old little girl. Next, we measure the back of the cabinet for the rear cover. We'll use quarter inch plywood. One of the accessories I decided to add to my assembly table is a paper towel holder, so I decided to make one using the CNC machine.
I bought this steel measuring tape on Amazon. It's 44 inches long and has an adhesive backing. So I'm going to mark on the table where I want to put it and use my router to cut a recess into the tabletop. I'll stick the tape inside the recess to protect it. The last accessory I want to add to this workbench is this bench vise. Believe it or not, my wife found it at an estate sale and bought it for me. I've had it sitting in a box for over a year now, so I'm really excited to have a place for it and be able to use it. I decided to use some scrap maple to create a mounting block for the vise. The purpose of doing this is to add strength as well as align the jaws of the vise with the surface of the table. Looks like this project is complete. Now let's do a quick walk around to see the big picture. You know, one feature I forgot to mention is using the top of the cabinet as a shelf to put tools on to get them out of the way of the work surface when I'm assembling a project. Here is a better view of the bench vise and the recessed measuring tape. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, for our subscriber giveaway. We all know that as an aspiring good worker and at-home DIYer, having good tools to get the job done is extremely helpful. So for this giveaway, I wanted to give away something that I use on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, I used this tool several times in this video, and that is the DeWalt DCF 680 eight volt cordless screwdriver kit. This kit includes the screwdriver, battery and charger. I'm telling you, this thing is a beast. It'll give you hours of use on a single charge. It's packed with features, including a light that'll let you screw in the dark. Now, this giveaway is open to all my subscribers who reside in the continental U.S. as shipping overseas is extremely expensive. The only caveat is I'll not be drawing a winner until we reach the 1,000 subscriber goal. So please, smash that like button and subscribe. Good luck, thanks for the support, and see you next time on East Wing Woodworking.